All right, so this is the weekly patron appreciation, aka contributor appreciation show. Um, it started off as patron appreciation. If you're not familiar with what patron is, if you're watching somebody on YouTube and you say, I support their work all of the time, commitment, energy, funds that they put into being a, uh, into doing YouTube, sorry, he's throwing me. Um, then you say, I want to support this person. You go to patreon.com and you commit to a monthly donation. It could be $1, it could be $20, it could be $100, whatever you decide. Um, and that just gives support for the channel. And so Jamal wanted to do something weekly to say thank you for everybody that contributes. And so that is in Patreon. It is through PayPal, it's through the Super Chats, it's through the Streamlabs. So this is the weekly show to say thank you. Usually it's on Sunday, but we had to kind of push it back. But if you are a patron, don't forget to log into that patron platform weekly to give us your topic suggestions because this show is aired live once a week and it is based off of the suggestions from those patrons. Immediately after the show or a little shortly thereafter, it's taken off of face it's taken off of Facebook. It's taken off of YouTube and it's listed exclusively for patrons. Um, if you are contributing somewhere outside of Patreon, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you want access, let us know. Shoot him an email. The link is in the description box below. And we'll give you access to an exclusive kind of Facebook group where you can get the content as well. Um, Perfect. If you want to send anything in the mail, we get cool stuff in the mail sometimes. P.O. box in the description box below. If you're not contributing monetarily, still thank you for being here. Make sure that you subscribe. If you enjoy the content, hit the like button. When you're watching live videos, make sure you give it a thumbs up because it makes it more prominent in people's feeds. So mm -hmm. we get more people here to hang out. Perfect. Excellent. Oh, and All by right, the way, Kelly. these videos get chopped up. So you're not going to get the entirety of it. it. It's broken into sections now. Um, it's easier for people to find the video that they want to watch. Like they may want to hear about the Assange thing and not hear about... Right, because these church, videos, yeah. like at the end of the day, some of them are like three hours yeah, long. Yeah, some are long. Originally, we were just dropping in the patron, and it's like, oh, okay, we'll find it. Yeah. And so now, um, which is why it takes longer, just FYI. If you're a patron, you might have noticed that the last two weeks, it takes, you know, between two to three days for it to, I think one of the videos didn't drop until like Thursday. Um, Click chat. Yeah, it takes a long time <clears throat> um, for Processing me to videos. edit the videos and then process them because I don't have like a super, super cool fast computer that's designed to do that um i may have to get you one so yeah so bear with us they're up soon and it should be easier for you to view the ones that you're interested in because they are sorted and um by topic now excellent so if you're a patron be sure to check those out and be sure to put your topic suggestions into the weekly announcement because unless you want a bunch of ufo videos i need your suggestion <laughs> that's what <laughs> that's <clears throat> what will happen if you like, all right, so there was this UFO video about this. All right, and that UFO video was talking about this. It was like, what oh, the hell? Speaking of, if you're late to the game and you didn't know, Jamal has officially started a second channel called The Black Box. Yes. So there's only one, I don't know, there's a few videos. There's like four there. videos, yeah. The link is in the description box below for that. But as well. those are more, you know, that could be UFO, um, comic book. It's more, that channel is somewhat of a grab bag of all interesting political philosophical um third person etc cetera, etc cetera. that's kind of my playground um instead of putting most of those videos here i can put those videos there so the last video that i want to talk about is an interview between jake uger and bernie sanders now this interview is interesting for a few counts the main thing is that sanders is having this interview because he wants to hit a very specific audience and he wants something to resonate with that audience anti war i am the anti-war candidate and i've been doing anti-war for the last 30 years that's what he wants to resonate with that's why he's going to the young turks to get it out because that's the you know or lefty wing of, of the voting base take a look at this part because he gets the opportunity to hit joe biden these guys have been doing their best not to hit each other too hard because they don't want any of their attacks to be used by donald trump um in the final election meeting whoever's chosen the last thing you want is an attack done by Joe Biden and hit Sanders to be used to be, you know, to hit him in the general election. So they've been running in this race in a certain, you know, pity pat, you know, way of going after each other. Um, but in this case, Sanders gets a little bit more strident. And I think this makes the point of why Joe Biden is not going to win in the election, why he can't win. Let's say, and I, I could be wrong, but I think he's going to have a hard time getting through the primaries. 
let's listen Creepy to Uncle Joe. Yeah, let's listen to Well, that's one of the reasons, but there there's more. Let's hear Sanders here. We're trying to do, and what we will do. So now let's talk about uh, the race, because it's, it's you versus Senator Biden at this point. You're the top two. Um, so I want to start with a specific issue and then get into the overall uh, race. 1994 crime bill. Uh, you voted for it, so, and, and not only did Senator Biden vote for it, but he says he does not regret it and that he's proud that he helped draft it. So. What is your position on it now, and what would you do if you were president about well, that specific bill? All right, so these are lines of debate that these guys are having. Now, keep in mind, the Young Turks is a propaganda outlet for, you could say, a tick to the left of the Democratic Party. So think of MSNBC light. That's the way I like to describe them. They are within Sanders' camp, meaning they like Sanders. Sam Cedar is in his camp also. This tick left to the to the uh, you know a tick to the left of the Democratic Party. Ultimately, regardless of who wins, they're going to tell you vote Democrat. But their policies tend to be somewhat to the left. Sanders, in this particular point, is going to this media arm to try to get this message to his supporters. One of the lines of debate that these guys are going to have is on that crime bill. That was a racist crime bill. They knew that the crime bill was going to explode the prison population of African Americans, but they did it anyway. Joe Biden was one of the main proponents pushing for this crime bill and is out there. Didn't he write it? Did he write the crime bill? It was Bill Clinton um, working with Republicans that pushed this okay. bill out. But Joe Biden was one of those people that was stomping for it and was strongly pushing for it. Yeah. And even today, hasn't necessarily um, owned up to the fact of how disastrous that bill was. I think it's funny because even we we mentioned last time. Do you want to show us? We mentioned last time that even Bill Clinton came out and said he shouldn't have supported the bill, or well, that yeah, know, because was, when Bill it Clinton was problematic when Bill Clinton was running in the race, I mean, was helping Clinton. He realized that that crime bill was a problem um, with that anchor running your throat, getting through the primaries. Like Bill Clinton, at the very least, understood that supporting that crime bill in a Democratic primary was not the best thing in the world, especially with a Democratic Party that has moved further to the left. And African Americans have started taking a higher place in that um, party. Yeah, people are saying, there's a couple people saying that yes, he did actually write the bill. Oh, did he? I didn't know he wrote the bill. Wow, that's even worse. That's even worse. I mean, because now he has to go through a primary and defend that. And it doesn't sound like he's backing away from that. He's not. So this is one of those lines of debate that Bernie Sanders is perfectly willing to have in the primary. And this is kind of my point. I think it's going to be hard for Joe um, Joe Biden to get through the primary. He has the answer for this. Like he's, <clears throat> it's like you're pinned to all of these issues. And in one after the next, you're going to be on the debate stage with people saying, yeah, Joe, they had horrible outcomes. And Joe Biden, what is he going to do? Is he going to say, I stand by. I stand by that. You yeah, know. Yeah. At the time when that crime bill was taking place, Sanders was out there screaming at the top of his lungs that this is going to cause problems and we need to deal with the prison population by attending to the material affairs of the people in the society itself as opposed mm -hmm. to just putting them in prison. But didn't Bernie vote for it? He did vote for it, ultimately. He's going to explain that, though. Let him explain Oh, okay. It. He's going to explain it right here, actually. As you know, there are bills that come before a member of Congress, and I was the House at that point, that have some very important things in it and some terrible things in it. That bill had the Violence Against Women Act, which was important. It also had something that I promised to the people of the state of Vermont that I would do, and that is vote to ban assault weapons in this country. In 1988, I lost an election, perhaps, on that issue. So if I had voted the other way, people would say, Bernie, you said you're going to vote to ban assault weapons, and I'd be criticized for that today. But this is the point that I want to make. If you check the record, you find that literally in the days around that bill, I was on the floor talking about mass incarceration, talking about capital punishment and my opposition to it. So it's one of those big pieces of legislation that you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So many bad things in that bill, and I spoke out against them, but I could not desert the people of Vermont when I told them I would vote to ban assault weapons. Do you think Joe Biden is wrong for being proud of that bill? It's not a bill that anybody should be proud of, not at all. There are certain elements. So his, so Sanders' point is, look, there was, it was a massive bill. And because it was a massive bill, there are elements of the bill that are good and that are bad. 
And I have to represent my state. And I told my state that I was going to ban assault weapons. And so I couldn't betray the people of Vermont and not vote for this bill because ultimately my constituents are the people of Vermont. That's his point. By the same token, he was right that he was on the floor of Congress screaming at the height of his lungs that this bill is horrible and this bill has things in it that are going to cause disaster as problems for us later. Because look, if, if you and I are having a conversation, I can say I'm going to make it illegal for somebody to steal. I can say I'm going to make it illegal for drugs. But if your society is constructed in a way where those people don't have what they need to make ends meet, and drugs just so happens to be one of those things that are booming, meaning high risk, high reward, high cash, then it doesn't matter that you made that a law. Now, yeah, you're going to, in order to substantiate that law, also going to have to pass laws in order to put people in prison. Maybe for putting longer sentences, you're going to have to pay for the jails, you're going to have to pay for the jail sales, you're going to have to pay for the prison guards, you're going to have to pay for the cars. By making a policy in this way, you have created all of these additional things that you have to pay attention to and pay for. Whereas, maybe if I would have, maybe not made that law. Maybe if I would have allowed people have more resources back, as opposed to 95% of the profit going to the top 1% under Obama, maybe less of that went to the top 1% and more of that went to the people in the society, in which case stealing may not necessarily be something they need to do. Like, there are other ways to go about crime um, and prevention of crime as opposed to hiring more cops. Hiring more cops doesn't necessarily prevent more crime. Right. It allows you to just put more people in prison. I, I, there's a difference in those things. Sanders' argument was that we need to go after these issues in a way that's more holistic and not necessarily in this kind of brute force means. These brute force means aren't stopping crime. Making sure people have food on their plate, can go to school when they want to go to school, aren't starving when they wake up in the morning, when they go through their formative live years of life. For that parent and that family to have what it needs, that it doesn't plaque. I guess there's a difference in those mentalities. That's all. Mm. Um, but yeah, he did sign it. But he did sign it. But does he not get points for bitching about it before he signed it? From who? He gets points from me. Because okay. what he said was right. I mean, it's not that I love the fact that he signed it, but I do accept the fact that he was right. And it's... it's All right, hold on. We have a super chat. Let me go back up. It was from Trudy. Uh, Trudy says, happy patron day. What's happening, Trudy? Bernie, Tulsi, or Green? Yeah. Um, uh -oh. slightly less joyous uh -oh. super chat from Bob uh -oh. Ramirezma. Uh -oh. Bob Ramirezma says, Sanders, that old man living in the trailer in the DNC's backyard. <laughs> oh, that's wrong. That's so wrong. All right. Thank that's that, that's more. Yeah, that's more. Hold on. Let, let Sanders finish because he's going to get, he's going to ask him about something else. This is Sanders delineating himself from Joe Biden in this case, meaning making this, um, difference. And again, Joe Biden is going to have to run through a Democratic primary, a Democratic primary that is becoming far more to the left and is going to be filled with youth. Meaning even though Bernie, um, Joe Biden is getting the elderly vote, I'm not calling them geriatrics anymore because people have said that that was offensive. Mm -hmm. And I think I slightly agree with him. So fair enough. I could see that being offensive. So fair enough. The elderly vote, the, 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 uh, the old timer older, vote. The older, in the older demographic. Yes, the older demographic. The non geriatric Okay, vote. moving on. But but you, you get my point. He's he's essentially the old the the this is gonna be the first election where the youth outnumber the older people that are gonna be in the election. Meaning that Joe Biden has somewhat of an uphill battle regardless of what the polls say. Not to mention I would argue as an uphill battle even getting through the primaries. The arguments that Uger and Sanders are talking about here are delineation points. These are points that are creating a space between who Joe Biden is and who Sanders is to a very left-wing audience. Listen to what they get on this thing of anti-war. And I really, I'm going to be fascinated to hear Joe Biden defend his positions on war when they get into the Democratic debates. Oh, that's going to be joyous. Suffolk banning assault weapons, violence, violence against women act, maybe some other things, but overall, no, obviously not. So uh, <clears throat> Joe Biden's claim, aided and abetted by the mainstream media, that states as, as a fact, is that he would do better against Trump, uh, and that that is one of the top things, obviously, the Democratic voters are considering. Right. Uh, I assume you think that's wrong, because you're on and against him. So why do you think that's wrong? Look, the truth is, this is the simple truth. I would not be running 
if I didn't think that I was the strongest candidate to defeat the worst, the most dangerous president in the history of our country, Donald Trump. Why is that? Uh, for two reasons. Number one, we're going to need a lot of excitement. We're going to need a large voter turnout. We're going to have to bring young people, black and white and Latino, Native American, Asian American, into the political process. I think that we are the strongest camp campaign to do that, to get that excitement, to get that energy, to increase voter registration among young people. Second of all, when you go to states in the Midwest, and I should tell you that virtually all of the polls have me running against Biden, uh, state by state, running, I'm sorry, running against Trump, uh, state by state, uh, and in, in the battleground states as well, all right? Why is that? Uh, and why do I think we can do a good job this is the in defeating argument. Trump? Because of the issues that Trump beat Hillary Clinton on, trade. You go to the Midwest and you say, hey, I voted for NAFTA and I voted for permanent normal trade relations with China, which is what Joe Biden did. You think that's going to resonate terribly well in the Midwest? I don't think it will. I led the opposition against those disastrous trade agreements. Do you think going around the country and telling people that I voted for the war in Iraq, which is what Joe did, you think that's going to resonate well with people? I don't think so. That was the probably, you know, the worst foreign policy blunder in the modern history of this country. I led the opposition against the war in Iraq. So I think for those reasons, nationally and especially in the battleground states, I think we are the campaign that could rally young people, that could rally working people, people of color, uh, to win this election. If the Democratic Party selects Joe Biden as a... That's the electability argument. Like, if you notice, corporate Democrats often make this argument that, um, well, I mean, he's going to get beat if he runs against Trump because the people don't want to go that far to the left. Like, that, that's the argument. So Joe Biden is the right guy um, because, you know, everybody knows Joe Biden and somehow he's more electable. Joe Biden looks like he's barely running this race. I mean, there have been reports that Joe Biden wasn't even involved over the Memorial Day weekend in running his campaign while all of the other candidates were fighting, you know, struggling. Well, Beto wasn't involved either because Beto was restarting his campaign. Um, but but he's Sanders is making a really good point. How is he getting through the primaries with a record like this? Like, that's his, his point. His point is the electability. He can't get through a primaries, a Democratic primary that has moved further to the left with the record that he has for the last 40 years. And how does he get through it? Whatever polls you want to show about, you know, what's going on in the race and everything else. Ultimately, he still has to get through the primaries. Yeah. And I still say when a debate start and he gets on a debate stage, oh, God, he's going to fall apart. Did you see the one where they were asking African-Americans about Joe Biden? And the guy was like, we have problems in the African-American community with Joe Biden. He was pushing that crime bill, that racist crime bill. He needs an answer for that. And I was like, yes. This was on MSNBC. This wasn't some hack thing. This oh, was okay. just a random thing. And they were in Texas talking about Joe Biden. And they were like, yeah, we have problems with Joe Biden in the African-American community. I was like, yes. I was embarrassed when all of those blacks voted for Hillary Clinton in the way that they did. Like 90-something percent. It's like, why are you doing it? You're doing it just because of what? Because you think you know her? Many of these people didn't even know it. They were just voting for the random Democrat. And you have others who was doing so because they were terrified of Trump. Yeah. And that, that puts you in the space where whatever the Democratic Party does at that point doesn't really matter because you're not voting for what they do in sense of policy. You're voting because you're terrified of the other guy, which means that that person can do whatever they want in that office. You weren't voting on policy. You were voting because you were terrified. That needs to stop. That doesn't mean vote for Republicans. Fuck no, that doesn't mean vote for Republicans, but it damn sure doesn't mean voting for any random Democrat. I don't give a shit if Q is pushing for that. Anything to add? No. Nope. Nothing at all? The, you, you've... Not coming at this from a political angle. You know yourself, there's a electability argument that they've always made it about Sanders. Like Sanders is not electable, especially in the Clinton race. Oh, she's more electable, she's more electable, she's more electable. And it, ultimately, Biden is just Clinton with pants. I mean, am I wrong? I don't think that's sexist. I don't wear pants, but I feel you. Um, I like to see people who pink pants. are... She wore pink pants. Biden has never worn pink educated. pants. Educated. You don't know what Biden has worn. Um, Not in public. 
I bet I can find a picture of Joe Biden. Somewhere. I would wager you could find a picture of him in assless chaps before you could find a picture of him in pink pants. How much you want to bet? $20. All right. Yeah, one hour. If I can find him in pink, pink pants. Pink pants. And you can't Photoshop. You're going to try to find sense. him in assless chaps? No, you just... I'm making an argument that the pink pants thing doesn't exist, so I don't need to just find an ass chaps thing. I just said okay. I'll find it before you find it in pink pants. Uh, but, I, but never mind. You get my point. I, I, never mind. So there's no bet. There's no bet because I don't think you. I don't think you. I don't think I there's going like to be a picture $20. of assless chaps. But I don't think you're going to find a picture of Joe Biden in pink pants. So if I find Joe Biden in pink pants, I give you twenty dollars. Okay. But you can't Photoshop. It. Garden Gnome said I used to just make $20. Charles Pereira, thank you. <laughs> Charles says, Trump still is the lesser evil. We're a Democrat now. Venezuela, Korea, and Iran, 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 mm, would already be invaded if Bernie capitulates. Hope he gets a stroke. That's a Oh, that's wrong. Um, look, I understand this argument that Trump is the <laughs> lesser error. But think of what that means from the standpoint of the political space. Do you really want things that accomplished or not? I mean, honestly, come on, let's have this conversation. I understand that Trump is horrible, and I understand Trump has been horrible on a wide host of issues. But from the standpoint of this country, the Democratic Party literally lost to that guy who was that horrible, and then turned around and screamed that the Russian government has something to do with the fact that she lost. Now, for the last several years, they haven't been dealing with this issue of why she lost, only using the Russians to kind of use political expedience. Why the hell would I vote for that? Like, honestly, why would I turn around and support a party that can't even own up to the fact that they lost a race on their own? Why would I support that? And if I'm backing some kind of corporate candidate, wouldn't that be co-signing the behavior? Doesn't matter who's on the other side of the political space to me. Would I not be supporting that behavior? But for so many people, that's all that matters to them. Is Which is why they're going to the end up side. with the exact same corporate candidate that they've always got. <clears throat> in Game of Thrones, where the wheel still existed and they were looking for a new master of whispers. Same thing. Do you really want that process to continue as is? Or do you want something fundamentally different? And I would argue something different. Now, you're going to have corporate Democrats that are going to say, hey, you got to put me in, otherwise you're going to get Trump. And I say, let them fail. I said, let them fail. Nothing changes as long as they can use the scapegoat of the Republican, the specter of the Republican, always force your behavior to put in. So if Hillary Clinton runs again in 2020, people should automatically vote for Hillary Clinton in 2020 to keep Donald Trump at that office. They've already rejected her in 2016. But now you have some people says yes. It doesn't matter that they reject her in 2016. If you Anybody get the opportunity, vote right. And I'm saying that's nonsense. I'm saying if you really want your society to change, if you really want that change, not this bullshit way of, okay, we just hate Trump. No, if you actually want real substantial change, the Democratic Party is only going to give you that change when there is nowhere else for them to go. And that nowhere else for them to go deals with this notion of you can't put up a bullshit candidate and shoehorn the corporate candidate in because people are terrified of Trump. That needs to stop. Nothing in your world changes as long as you're not willing to deal with that fact that fear is the thing that prevents you from getting from point A to point B. I, it, I don't doubt that Trump is a horrible person. My issue here is that in order for you to get real change in your society, I mean, for fuck's sake, 12 years. They say you had 12 years left. Like, and that's Democrat or Republican because even if it was a Democrat, Hillary Clinton was selling fracking all across the planet. So, you, you know, do you believe Joe Biden is going to somehow be different? What's your climate change policy, Joe Biden? Beating Trump is my climate change policy. Okay, great. Let's put him in office. No. There's more to things than just putting in the same random hack in office and expecting something to take place. No, no, no. There's something to be said for real change. Something to be said for real change. So, you know, I, I'm not, I don't buy into this notion that any hack would do. And in, any hack will do gives you the situation where you get any random hack because you're willing to settle for any random hack. There needs to be something to be said for a line that you're willing to draw saying, no more, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done with these hacks. Give me who I want, or I don't want to participate. I mean, at the very least, it gets a clear message that there are a section of people that if you don't do X, you will lose. You're and that needs to be a very clear because. line, yes. You know, Medicare for all or bus. That's where I'm at. You know, if Democrats want to take this line of, well, we're not going to push for Medicare for all and we're going to stop, you know, okay, fine. You heard my line. And I think you should have a ton of people 
lining up in solidarity on that red line. Medicare for all is my red line. If you're not pushing for it, don't come looking for my vote. If you had solidarity among that point, what happens? Does the Democratic Party really say, okay, we're just going to try our luck without this millions of people? Or do they toe the line? Like, I guess I'm making the point that your political space, to some degree, is based on the acquiescence of the public to get involved in the political space. And part of that is willing to say no yeah. to have these parties that is using this notion of the Republican as a boogeyman. Just, look at that boogeyman. Look at that boogeyman. It scares you or cows you into voting for whatever random hack of Democrat. Q saying, you know, whoever it is, any blue would do. No, it doesn't. Not every blue would do. Sanders even says that. Don't get me wrong. He said he'll vote for any random Democrat because you yeah, know, he, he had to he's sign it. Back yeah, whoever gets the nomination, but you know. But he does make that point that not every Democrat would do, especially when you have actual real things that needs to take place. In this interview, he makes a point of about a political revolution, and he is right. He is right. Anything to say in response to anything I said, or? anything that you might want to add from people. What are people outside of the political space thinking about this? I don't have any friends. I just do the news. You have other people that you interact with. What have they said about politics when they've brought it up? Have they heard them say anything about any contender? So someone told me the other day that they were not voting for Bernie. Why not? They wouldn't tell me why. Did you push? I said, why not? Who are you voting for? Kamal Harris? And they kind of laughed. And I was like, please don't tell me he's Creepy Joe. And they kind of laughed. So, it's your mama. so, and I said, I know this person is not well versed on Tulsi. So. She said Tulsi? No. Oh. Um, I don't know who they're voting for, but they ain't voting for Bernie. They've kept it a secret? And like next time, I feel like I am going to cry because I want to be like, so what? Were they elderly? What points are. Were they over 60? What points are important to you in a candidate? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, if you're not, like, who's getting your vote based on what? Well, that's what I'm asking you. Are they over 60? I mean, what's their, like... They're the, over 50. I am curious about why. Like, I, I tend to be Because I know, like, last year my dad said, and I'll say my dad because you already put him on blast and said this. Last year he said, um, I ain't voting for Bernie Man. Man, that man too old. And that was last year, or 2016. But he also said he would never vote for another Democrat again. Or he wouldn't vote right, for Democrat again. Right, he said the Democrats lost him. Like, yeah. after last year, he was like, And this was the this. same person who said... He I was keep, voting blue no right, matter who. He voted blue no matter who. And he's now... So in 2016, but now, like, over the last year, he was like, yeah, man, they lost me. But that doesn't mean he's voting for a Republican. That just means that Democrats right. have lost him. So uh, that's a win for me, because that's my only argument. My well, argument is that, it's not one or the other. I don't really both. have any friends... And because we, <laughs> the few that I have, because we're outside of the political spectrum, we don't, we're not really, polit we don't really talk about politics like that. Um, my girlfriend that I talk to every day, she's pretty progressive. I think she's voting for Bernie. Nice. Um, okay. You know what I mean? Like the others, I don't really know. Maybe I'll start asking. Okay. Um, Just curious. You have to do organizing for Sanders um, thing, so I you do. can I talk got a about video it. To do. Yeah. All right. So. That is awesome. I'm going to end this here then. I mean, I don't think we have anything else, at least not on my list. Um, guys, I really do appreciate you all showing up. Um, Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's everything on my list. I mean, climate change, Assange. We got it all. And I added the Bernie Sanders one, so fair enough. Also, we added the Comic-Con thing. Guys, thank you all for showing up. Um, if you guys enjoy this content and you find yourself coming back here often, please share, like, subscribe. And of course, you can always support through PayPal or Patreon. And again, guys, I really do appreciate your support for the channel. You guys really do help make this channel. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have a All good guys. night. Bye-bye.